Greetings, we're going to go over <clears throat> how to convert uh, vertex, excuse me, standard form, form of a quadratic equation uh, to vertex form. <clears throat> Specifically, um, I'm going to start out with review here. What I use for all my students is what I call the template form, where the, the uh, number values are in letters here. So we're converting from this form to this form. <clears throat> What does that look like with numbers instead of just being a template? Well, for example, and we'll work through this one, if we have y equals squared plus 6x minus 4. So in this case, your a term is 1. Uh, so we don't usually write the 1 because it, we can be lazy sometimes with algebra. <coughs> and then the b is the 6 term and the c is the minus 4 term. So to convert, one, one of the ways to do this is <clears throat> you can try to factor, but often what's going to be quickest is if you know how to complete a perfect square. <clears throat> In this case, if, for example, if we tried to just factor this out, let's take a look at it. <clears throat> With a factored form, generally if it's in standard form and we try to go into a factored form versus vertex form, which is what you see up here, if we try to take this and go into factored form, finding the roots, we would generally look at what adds to the C term, uh, excuse me, what adds to the B term and multi multiplies to the C term. So what value in this form plus some number squared will add <coughs> to, uh, so the, the p here would add to that and times itself would equal that. Well, you can quickly just try to find factors of 6 to do this, and 3, um, 2, 6, and 1, nothing, <coughs> even if we didn't square it, uh, will add up to 6, but square something times itself to minus 4. What we might see is if, for example, you had x plus 3 squared, right? Now, when that's expanded out, or that's the same as x plus 3 times x plus 3, when that's expanded out, right, x times x, x times 3, 3 times x, and 3 times 3, we would get x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9. So that would get us our 6x term when that's simplified, but obviously the 9 is not negative 4. So that's a pretty good sign to you as a student. You need to apply a perfect square here, uh, completing the square, excuse me. So here is an example, and some. Um, I'll go through this one and a second example uh, to complete the square. So one of the first steps you do in completing the square is set y equal to 0. So our equation would now become, here's our expression that we're going to be using in the example. This, okay. Next, if you had a value for a, in this case it's 1, we would just divide the entire equation by a. So I'm going to write it, but there's nothing here. So divide all by a. So, in our case, that's still the same equation of that, okay? Next, we're going to group. So, we're going to put the variables on one side and the constants on the other. So, when we move the variables, uh, excuse me, the constants, we only have one constant here, minus 4. So, we're just going to move that to the left side. So that becomes positive 4 equals this stuff because we moved it over to the left side. Now we have, if you're familiar with grouping, we can kind of form some grouping here. So now factoring this from a grouping perspective, right, we have the constant on the left side and the variables on the right side. And again, we say, all right, well, we're missing a C term here. So let's pretend we can just make C whatever we want. Pretend you can make C whatever you want. Pretend. Okay. So, for example, in the beginning, I kind of intentionally said, hey, if we used x plus 3 squared, it would give us 
this, which when simplified is x squared plus 6x plus 9. But the c term didn't equal what we wanted. It did not equal the, the uh, minus 4. Our equation got cut off here. I'm going to put it back. There we go. It didn't equal the minus 4 here, right? So that's a problem. But now we can do it because I just said when you're doing this part, you can pretend. So there's a reason for that algebraically. I'll explain it in a second. But basically, <clears throat> you're completing the square. So now if we choose to make c plus 9, right? So I put quotes around it because it's pretend, right? Then we could easily say 4 equals x plus 3 squared. <clears throat> and now we've accomplished. But because we had added, because we know that we're going to get a c term of plus 9, in order for the math to work, we need to subtract 9 from the final equation. So that what that looks like is when you expand this set of terms out and it becomes all of this stuff. So x plus 3 times x plus 3, that's this part, right? Minus 9. It becomes all of this. And now you can see you've got an x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9 minus 9, which finally... When all of the math is done, in order for our expression to remain true, for the statement to remain true, it becomes this value. So that's why we're able to pretend. The focus here is um, try to create a uh, nice and easy, complete square, a perfect square here, that um, the C term will be easy to remove. And so we do that, we balance it by subtracting 9. Okay? So And then finally, the last step is after you've gotten to this point, then move the constants back onto the other side. So it's going to look like this. So we move the 4 back over here. So that's minus 4, which all of that becomes that which is the same as minus 13. And we are there. That is vertex form, except remember the vertex form has the a coefficient in front, which is the same in both standard form and, e and vertex form. It's the same reference. So we would put an a here, but remember what was a in our original equation? If we look in our expression, we're using an example, it's one. So it doesn't really matter. You could put a 1 here for your own sanity if you want in the notes, trying to remember how you got that and where it came from. But you are there in vertex form. So let's do the same thing, except for this time, let's do one that actually has a coefficient of a. I'll set it up. You can pause after I've set it up here in a minute and try it if you'd like. Here's the practice example that we have. So I'm going to put in some numbers for these values and then we're going to convert it to vertex form. So in this case we're going to do 2 times a, excuse me, x squared. So our a value is 2 this time. So it's actually greater than 1 plus we're going to do 12x plus 20. Okay. So if you want you can pause here and you can try to go through the steps. I'm going to go through the steps here quickly. So first step, what do you rem do you remember what we do? So we set y equal to 0. So it's just going to look like this. That allows us to essentially set up uh, an expression we can begin modifying algebraically. Okay. Next. <clears throat> now this is the case where we actually have a equals more than 1. So when we divide by it, it will make a difference. So the next step is divide all terms by a. Okay. So in this case, it's going to be 2 divided by 2 is 1, 12 divided by 2 is 6, 20 divided by 2 is 10. Now we're going to move our constants onto one side so that we have all our variables on one side and our constants on the other. All our terms with variables on one side and all our terms with constants on the other. So it will be minus 10 equals x 
squared plus 6x. Well, I chose this example pretty intentionally because if you saw the first example, now again, we can kind of pretend c to be whatever we want and create a square here. So last example, an easy square that at the term adds up to create 6, x was simply using oops, uh, x plus 3 squared. So we're going to do the same thing. x plus 3 times x plus 3. But remember, this gives us an extra minus 9 at the end. So we have to subtract that out because we know in order for this statement, this expression to remain true, if I just do that, then in the end I'm going to end up with this plus 9, and then if I work backwards, I will not get this original expression, which is a problem. We have um, broken the math rules and the universe falls apart and all that stuff. So instead, we say minus 10 equals x plus 3, x plus 3. We subtract out the extra 9 to deal with it, okay? And then we can simplify this because usually we don't write it out twice when it's expressed as a squared. We just say x plus 3 squared minus 9. Now, do you remember what's next? I'm just going to recombine our terms. So in this case, I'm going to move the 10 over back onto the other side, x plus 3. squared, so you get minus um, plus 10, so that's plus 1. Now the last step is, remember we took, um, we took everything divided by a in the beginning, so now we need to multiply everything by a, okay? So notice how the a is only carried in the front of this expression, but actually this is no longer um, uh, c here, but another term k because it's had some operations done to it. And that's what we're creating, is we're creating k out here. So we need to multiply everything by 2, OK? Because we had divided it by 2 here. So that's going to look like this. 0 equals 2x plus 3 squared plus 1. Now let's distribute that 2. So we multiply everything. So this, in vertex form, we just leave that in front. That makes it pretty easy. We just say 0 equals 2x plus 3 squared. Okay. And then we actually carry out the operation on the constant here. So plus 2. Now, if you want to pause again, I'm going to ask a question. You can try it on your own. How do we take this back into... Oops, I made one mistake. I apologize. That parenthesis should be there. How do we take this back into standard form? Well... All we have to do is writing it as an expression in true vertex form with a y there. We just have to carry out the, the algebra, right, and expand the terms. Okay, so if you want to try that, go ahead. If you want to continue listening, here we go. So y equals, we're going to carry out, uh, it's PEMDAS, so parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction, and that order. So we're going to carry out what's inside the parentheses and the exponent to it. So it's 2 times, in the correct spot, 2 times x squared, because x times x is x squared, x times 3, and my x disappeared, x times 3 is 3x three plus 3 times x is 3x, plus 3 times 3 is 9, and then we still have this 2, so I've just expanded what's here. Let's simplify it. So simplifying the inside of that, we simply rewrite y equals 2 times x squared. We just combine these terms to 6x plus 9 plus 2. Now let's distribute the 2 to everything. So that becomes 2x squared, because 2 times x squared, plus 2 times 6x becomes 12, whoa, 12x 
and 2 times 9 becomes 18. And you can kind of see where this is going when we simplify the last term. We get 20, which ought to look like our original expression. So that's it. Cheers.